Hello, I'm Agathe Bellin, a PhD candidate at the TU Delft, and I'm here to present to you the method we developed for interpreting inner mechanisms of computer vision models by leveraging human computation. But first of all, why do we need interpretability? Besides being required by laws like the GDPR, uh, it serves various goals that different stakeholders might have. Especially in this paper, we are interested in providing explanations about the model's mechanisms to machine learning developers in order for them to debug a model of interest. This means that the explanations should help them identify both the desired and incorrect mechanisms the model has learned. These explanations can also serve other stakeholders, such as auditors who should validate or not a model before its deployment. There already exist two types of methods to get explanations about the mechanisms the model has learned. The first type is the uh, global type with global explainability methods. These methods take as input a model to explain and a set of images on which the model can be applied. They output visual concepts the model generally makes use of when making predictions of the different classes. Each visual concept is expressed by a list of image patches to interpret into one concept. On this image, for instance, the one row corresponds to one concept. The first row might express the light gray color concept for the moving van, for instance. From our point of view, these methods are limited for two main reasons. It is not easy to make their sense of their outputs. If we zoom on to the patches of one concept, we can see it's not easy to interpret. Here, does it show the gray color, the tires, the pavement? We're not sure. Besides, these methods do not uncover the entire diversity of mechanisms a model follows. We notice that not all of the concepts a model uses are actually outputted, and the methods do not give any indication on potential combinations of concepts the model relies on. Uh, the explanations might highlight the flashlight, the cross logo, the tires, and the ambulance. Yet it might be that the model does not always use the three of them to classify an image as an ambulance, but maybe just the tire and the flashlight in terms of the images. Um, then there are also the local explainability methods. They aim at explaining the predictions the model makes for individual images. They take as input the model and the image of interest, and they output a cell in CMAP, such as on these images here, which points out the pixels that are important for the model to make a prediction. From our point of view, these methods also bear a few limitations. Particularly, their outputs are not easily intelligible. They require one manual step for someone who looks at the explanation to understand it. So they need to make the link from the visual information in the cell in CMAP to a nameable concept, such as the flashlight here. And this concept might not even be clear. Is it really the flashlight or is it the blue color, for instance? Um, we will show uh, next that, that our method addresses all these limitations that we listed for both local and global methods. But first, let us explain further what we believe an explanation should look like for the developers. So we explained that previous methods are not necessarily intelligible. So instead, we search in literature outside computer science for insights on what intelligible, intelligible explanations could look like. We identified two adaptive theories, the representational theory of mind that explains how humans reason about their environment, and also scientific works about the human visual processing system that explains how people process visually their environment. The first theory shows that humans conceive concrete or abstract notions by associating concepts to them. In our case, this would not be any concept, but concrete ones that have a direct uh, visual representation. So let's say we're thinking about an ambulance. We might think about the flashlight, the cross logo, the general shape of the chassis, etc. cetera. Uh, these are entities, but we also might think about attributes. So for instance, the colors, like the orange and the white or the yellow and the blue of the chassis. The concepts might be themselves uh, composed of other entities. So the chassis must have wheels, the wheels might have spokes, etc. And this is what we call granularity, uh, also expressed in the visual processing system. 
Finally, we do not only think about single concepts, but also about their combinations and uh, their typicality. For instance, the shape of the car might be typical of ambulances, but it might also be typical of other cars such as police cars. But combined with this color, uh, then it becomes really typical of ambulances. Um, our second requirement is that the explanation should reflect the mechanisms the model, of the model with high fidelity. Uh, if we look at classification tasks, such as classifying ambulances and moving vans, we do not want to know about any concept that a human might associate to each class. Instead, we might want to know about the ones the model actually looks at. Here, for instance, the model might not have learned to look at the wheels since they are present in both types of classes. So we wouldn't want wheel to appear in our explanation. Fidelity also means high coverage. Even when a concept is not expected by humans, let's say the model learned to look at the ambulance driver, we would want it to appear in the explanations. A last requirement we have is that the explanation should allow for different modes of interaction. The first mode would be exploration. A developer might simply want to explore whether the explanations reflect what they would generally expect of the model. But they might also have some specific concepts in mind already, and they should also be able to query them as well. So for instance, they might see that flashlight and cross logo are typical. They could also be typical of police cars or pharmacy, for instance. So they would actually want to check whether the combination of the two is more typical than each of them separately. So based on these requirements, what are the explanations we ourselves provide in this work? At the local level, they would look like the following. There are rules uh, which associate concepts, so entities, attributes, and combinations to each class. And most importantly, at the global level, uh, they present the rules that are more or less typical of the mechanisms of the model for the different classes. The rules are associated with a typical ST score in order to rank them. For instance, we see that the ambulance is associated with the flashlight and the orange color with rather high typicality. But with even higher typicality, it's associated with the driver of the ambulance, uh, which shows an undesired bias in the model's mechanisms. So this answers the first two requirements by design. And fidelity is allowed by the methods that we actually developed for getting these explanations. So how does our method in seca actually works in practice? Um, so it takes as input uh, the model to interpret and the images on which it's typically applied. Then uh, it extracts uh, silency maps using existing local interpretability methods, uh, which uh, helps us in leveraging the high fidelity of some of these methods. Then uh, we perform crowdsourcing tasks in order to annotate the entity, entities and attributes um, that are represented by these maps. Since there might be errors in the annotations or missing annotations, we then reconcile them and extract a tabular representation where each row represents an image and each concept, uh, each column, a concept and classes. And finally, we leverage existing um, methods for extracting insights from tabular data in order to obtain explanations. Especially we use rule mining to, to get uh, explanations for the exploration task. And we use typical statistical tests to answer queries about concepts and combinations. This way we answer the different developers goals. And how did we actually evaluate our method? As by design, the outputs for our methods are already intelligible and support the two modes of interaction. We mainly investigated the fidelity of the explanations. We also looked at the scalability of the method since, in, since it employs human annotators. We looked at the kind of trade-offs there exist between the quality of the explanations and their cost. But how to process to such evaluation processes? where we need to measure the fidelity of the explanations. So we need to obtain some sort of ground truth about the mechanisms of the model in order to compare explanations with. And this can be very challenging. Challenging. There exists no established benchmark for that. 
previous work to train one model and mainly check whether their explanation reflect a few obvious concepts, they expect the model to have learned. We instead propose a more extensive test suit. So we created multiple models for which we can estimate the ground truth mechanisms more precisely. For that, what we did is that we used three data sets and for each of them, we introduced synthetic biases that, biases that should skew the models mechanisms towards certain concepts. We also use two different machine learning models known to have slightly different mechanisms. And then in each case, we observed whether the explanations reflected the skews. Then for scalability, we varied two main hyperparameters of the method, uh, the type of annotators uh, used and the number of images annotated. So first, let's go to the results around fidelity. We used the model pre-trained on the whole ImageNet dataset, and we retrieved global explanations for three classes, sharks, lobsters, and tensions. Uh, these explanations seem to correspond to the animals, like the claws of the lobster, or the orange color of the lobsters, or the shark's fins, etc. Instead, the explanations of AC, one of the global methods, are much less rich, only with colors, nothing directly related to the animals. Then we injected synthetic biases by fine tuning the model only on these three classes. Since the images of these classes have spurious background biases, then the model mechanisms should rely on such background information. Especially the sharks are all in the water, uh, the lobsters in plates with faces, tenches around grass, green grass or trees. And that is what we see in our explanations with the water, faces, grass, etc. In contrary, AC reflects much less of these background biases, only the water and the white dishes. So in conclusion, Seca indeed identifies concepts which are relevant to the model mechanisms and allows to uncover more mechanisms with undesired biases. As for the cost fidelity trade-off, we compared the number of images annotated and to the quality of the annotations. We assumed that the more annotations there are, the higher the fidelity is. So we compared explanations extracted from 400 annotated images to explanations with fewer images. First, we compute the recall of the concepts retrieved. Many of these concepts are retrieved uh, only with 250 to 300 annotations, where we get a recall of 0.5 at least. Only the low typicality concepts in the blue, uh, sorry, the orange graph uh, do not always appear, but this is not that important since they have low typicality, so they are not important for the model. The results are also good for the precision and the average error on the typicality scores. More in the paper about this. Generally, it shows that Seca requires a rather low number of annotations in order to uncover high fidelity explanations. And that's not only with uh, trained annotators, but as we show in the paper, also with crowd workers. So our methods and its evaluation still bear a few limitations though, that we intend to study in the future. Especially we plan to build an interactive user interface and to conduct user studies in order to study the usefulness and usability of the explanations in practice. We also plan to refine the output explanations and adapt the method for different classification tasks that might require domain expertise. So in conclusion, we learned that exp existing explainability methods do not necessarily provide intelligible enough and high fidelity explanations. Yet we can efficiently leverage human computation techniques in order to remedy to these limitations. And especially with SECA, uh, we provide uh, model explanations, which are both answering exploratory and validatory needs, uh, and that are more insightful than existing methods while still cost efficient. Yet, of course, further work is needed. So thank you for listening to our presentation and don't hesitate to contact us for any questions.